Hey everybody. So here's the problem. Anytime we make a change to our web app and we deploy it to production systems, we run the risk of possibly breaking something and not knowing about it. So a lot of times, I mean, it happens, right? Uh, a lot of times what people will do is they will create a checklist of functional tests that they need to do in their browser to make sure everything's working okay. Um, a functional test script, if you will, or a regression test script. Um, and so here it comes on Friday and we deploy our weekly code changes to production and some poor guy has got to go through this list from top to bottom, clicking around in the browser to make sure everything is still working fine. Now the problem is, not only does that take a long time, and not only is it really boring, but people probably won't do it as thoroughly as they, they very often should. Because it's just, because it takes time and it's boring. So today I want to show you a solution to this problem uh, in a free browser plugin called Selenium. And what Selenium is, is it's an add-on for Firefox. You can go to Google and find it by typing in Selenium. And you can see one of the first results that comes up is Selenium Web Browser Automation. So it is exactly what it says. It's a way to automate your browser. It's a, uh, if I click on this link, you'll see over here in the right-hand column, it says Download Selenium. Now, you have to use Firefox to record these interactions with your browser. But you can play them back in multiple different browsers, not just Firefox, uh, as long as you, you, you export your script to Java. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, but Selenium is a Firefox plugin, uh, an add-on for Firefox that basically just records what you do in your browser as you're interacting with a website. And then it allows you to interject assertions or um, little tests inside of your test cases to make sure that certain conditions are true, that, that a certain text appears on the screen, that uh, a certain element appears in the document object model, that a certain, a certain cookie exists in your browser. Uh, and so I'm gonna show you how this works just at a very high level. And if you're more interested, you can of course go to the Selenium website and do a little reading and, and experimenting on your own. Here under the download section, you see a heading that says Selenium IDE. That's the add-on for the Firefox browser. I'm gonna click on this link to download the latest release version. I'm going to allow it to install in Firefox. Yes, I want all this default stuff. And restart my browser. Okay, now if you look here in this toolbar, you can see I've got an icon for Selenium IDE. Also, if you look under the Tools menu, you can see that I also have a, uh, a, a menu item for Selenium IDE. So I'm gonna click on that and here is the Selenium IDE dialog that opens up. I'm going to move my browser out of the way a little bit here. Matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Amazon. Let's pretend like we work for Amazon and we need to do some tests on the Amazon website. You want to enter this base URL here in your script, uh, in your test case. Right now the test case is untitled. We'll, we'll save it with a name in a second. But notice this button right here. It says, now recording. Click to stop recording. So let's do some interactions. Let's say that we're testing the gift cards area. And we're going into the email area of instant delivery. And we're going to be looking at this first option. And we want to make sure that all of these buttons are present and that they have the right text. So over here, I can click. Now notice right here, all those interactions that we just did were recorded. Now I'm gonna click right here and I'm gonna add an assertion. Uh, I'm gonna choose a very common and simple one. I'm just gonna assert that there's some text and it says what I expect it to say. I can click on select and it'll say select an element by clicking on it in the browser. I'm gonna click on my browser here to make sure that it, it takes the focus. And when it has focus, you can see that as I hover over things, they turn yellow. Uh, the elements in the in the DOM, the document object model. So I'm going to click this one right here. Now notice that the target got a value. That means that the Selenium IDE figured out how to identify this thing uh, in the DOM. Now I can say, okay, I want to make sure that the value of that equals what I expect, which is upload your 
photo. I'm going to stop recording. And I'm going to save this as a test, save this test case as my test case one. Now, let's play this back. I'm going to go to just the root uh, Amazon, just so you can see how this works when I push play. Here we go, play. You can see my browsers over there moving around. I'm not clicking anything myself. So the Selenium tool has taken over my browser and is executing my test case. When it's done, I can see that it has run one time and there are zero failures. Let's force it to fail just so you can see how that works. I'm going to go in here and change this text when we did the assertion. I'm going to take out the word upload and I'll save that test case. I'm going to play it again. This time when we get to the end, we should fail because that element in the DOM does not say your photo. There we go. Actual value upload your photo did not match your photo. And you can see the test run once and there were one failures. Now you can also create a new test case. So I'm going to select that test case, press record, and I'm going to start recording. So let's go to gift cards. We'll basically do the same thing. We'll go to the email, we'll go to this first option, and this time I'm going to click right here. I'm going to add an assert text. I'm going to select. And I want this one to say, use our designs. And I'll save that one, save test case, as my test case two. Now, now that I got more than one test case in here, I can save all of that as a test suite. My Amazon test suite. I'm going to play all this back one more time, and then I'm going to show you one really cool feature, and then we're done. What I want here is to play the entire test suite. So let's do that. Now we're playing back everything. And it failed, but it's going to go on and execute my second test anyway. At the end of the day, I'll have a report of what failed. So you can see I've got two test cases that were run, and I've got one failure. And there's a log here. So I can scroll and see in the log what actually failed. Now, let me show you something really cool. I can also select on one of these test cases and I can say export the test case as Java JUnit for WebDriver. So I'll say my test.java. Let's take a look at what that looks like. My test.java, there we go. And here it is. Selenium produced the JUnit code that I need in order to automatically run this test as a JUnit test. And what's nice about this is you can see that it, there's this driver class here. Um, I can actually, and you can see it's a new Firefox driver. There's other drivers. So I can actually make all of my test suite run against Firefox, change the line of code, make it run again against IE, change the line of code, make it run again against another browser. Um, but of course, you don't need the Java part of this. Um, you can be a, a business analyst and you can simply use the Selenium IDE as an add-on to Firefox. You can collect these test cases, put them into test suites, check them into some kind of file system or, or source code system, and share them as a team so that everybody can execute the same test suite automatically and, you know, from time to time when you make changes to the site, make a few tweaks and changes to the test suite. Very cool. I know if you've never seen this before, you are, you should be excited about what you see and the implications this could have to saving you time, saving you money, and making sure that you and your team do a much better job at functional testing or regression testing when you make changes to your software solutions.